This is episode 77 of our Road to Unicum, and today I review the T-28. This is a tier 8 American tank destroyer in World of Tanks, and this is the second time that I'm playing this tank. I actually rage sold it when I was grinding it to get up to the T-95, and there was a point at which I was just too frustrated playing this tank. I think partly because the speed is very limited, and I'll talk about how to manage that throughout this video. Uh, and I had like an abysmal win rate. I had like a 39% win rate the first time that I played it through. I just unlocked the T95 tonight and managed to raise the win rate up to about 57%. So at least I finished on a pretty good note. We're going to look at a pair of battles with the T28. The first is a tier 9 Erlenberg, and then we're going to look at a tier 10 Himmelsdorf loss, where I think there's a lot to be gained by talking about it. Now, I really like what our ELC Even 90 did in terms of doing some spotting to see if he can pick up any other tanks that are crossing to the west or even where that WZ is. Now you can safely spot, instead of going out and active scouting like the ELC even did, you can actually spot from the buildings directly to the right of this red building that's in front of me. That's usually where I go because you can still spot their crossers. You can't spot their back line all the way down by the K lane, but even if you spot them most likely no one on your team is going to be in a position to fire on them anyway. Now. The main thing to note about the T-28 is it is a slow, heavily armored tank destroyer, so it's built for brawling, right? And one of the most common mistakes that players make with well-armored tank destroyers is that they play them way too campy, right? And there's a couple reasons why you don't want to do that. The first is that a tank like this only really has a top speed of around 20, 22 kilometers per hour, so it's completely incapable of flexing and it's very risky to drive across open ground where you will you know have a meaningful window of getting shot at right so that's part of the reason why I moved up I didn't move down the five lane like our other heavies did but instead I went to a position where I could potentially get some early shots based on what the ELC even 90 was spotting but then also work this east-west corridor here where I can fire across the cap zone at these enemy tanks so you know I caught this WZ a couple times here. That's a low percentage shot, you know, firing at his cupola, but now he's pretty much hull down, so there isn't, you know, much of a shot. But what I'm trying to do is bait these guys into shots by kind of wiggling back and forth, and then coming out here and trying to take time to aim. So that's a really well placed shot right in the turret. It's not a high percentage shot, but then again, I'm not really giving them anything to hit in terms of my tank either. Most of my hull is obscured by the wall in front of me or by the rubble, which is higher in my lower front. Uh, plate and I am hittable in the two cupulas on top of this tank but you know that's a relatively small target and you know as long as I'm moving back and forth I can bait them to missing shots now the HWK did fire HE so most likely he's on the south southeastern side of the castle right but since he's firing HE I'm not terribly concerned and I had HE loaded there because I was hoping to get a kill shot on the Emil and I didn't bother to go ahead, I just went ahead and just fired the shot that I had instead of reloading. And right there, that's another really placed, uh, well placed cupula shot. But the idea with the how I'm playing the T28 is I'm staying close enough that I can self spot my targets and then I'm close enough where I'm not waiting for someone to drive into my field division. Now there are tanks that are much more sniper or camp oriented. So let's say like the Swedish TDs, right? Um, especially the ones that are at tier 8 and below which have very weak armor and those tanks have good camo and good mobility and so it's okay in those cases to hang back and snipe you don't you wouldn't want to be in the city in a Udes for example because you just get absolutely wrecked and you won't you know people might even load HE and just you know lol pen you because it would be so easy but you know a very common mistake with players and right here by the way this WZ has repositioned so that he's a little bit perpendicular he's moved off to the side of me which is a really savvy thing for him to do and so now it's leaving me in a position where I can't safely fire on the AMX without taking flanking fire from that WZ120 and I've also got to be careful of the Scorpion now he's been spotted down along the K lane by our ELC but that little archway that's just to my right is near where I'm vulnerable so I want to be careful here I you know obviously I want to try to keep my gun active but I don't want to force and chase damage that's another really common mistake I see people doing this all the time and there are cases where it's okay to chase damage you know or it's okay to trade shots with someone as long as you're gonna put them out in their high value target and right there that's a, a fairly lucky shot but you know as Wayne Gretzky said you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take so you know, keep your gun hot it's super important you know, obviously taking out a light tank is really valuable because that tank can offer 
you know, the the enemy side, you know, vision. Now, granted, I don't think their HWK has been playing very effectively, and the fact that he was firing HE at me, whereas he, sh he could have penned me through my sides. This tank has really good armor frontally, and the armor on the sides is around like 100, 110 millimeters thick. So if you're angled facing your opponent, you know, at about 20 degrees, that armor, or even, you know, 30 degrees, that armor's still over 200 to penetrate. But, I, you know, he should have had a perpendicular shot on me based on where he was in the southeast corner of the uh, castle. Now, I'm going to try to take a shot and watch what their WZ does. Right before I fire, he wiggles his turret. And that's really what you should do. There's no reason, unless you're trying to aim in on a target, where you should stop and be completely stationary. Like, here I'm going to stop and aim in, and right there I get a nice high roll. Even though this is a 400 alpha gun, I managed to get a high roll and finish him off. What I was actually expecting to happen is to penetrate him for in the 400 range, leave him one shotable, switch to high explosive, and then uh, pick him off. Now, I'm hugging these rocks, and I'm waiting until I'm no longer lit. You know, because there are... This has been a really close game. As a matter of fact, we're now losing by a tank. Now, I can't fix the other areas of the map. This isn't a light or medium tank where I have the capability of flexing meaningfully, right? And here, I I'm going to move forward, and actually, this AMX heavy tank is going to actually come out. Actually, well, I'm going to move and just field the fire, but I was willing to do that to potentially, you know, risk eating a shot, and it looks like he'd fired APCR, so he was using his premium ammo, but I knew that based on where his hit points were, it was pretty likely that, you know, a high explosive round, which wouldn't penetrate him front frontally, would still splash him for enough damage to take him out. Um, but, you know, like I said earlier, a lot of people will play very heavily armored tank destroyers, so like the T-28, T-28 Prot, uh, T95, uh, the you know T uh, the T110 or T1 uh, T110E3, uh, the JPE100. People will play those as campy tanks, and you can do that, and you can win. But they're really you're not really playing those tanks in a way that mechanically makes sense. Now, obviously, you don't want to force the armor to save you. Like you'll notice that whole time that I was brawling with the tanks to the east of me, I was trying to bait them or only offer them very low percentage shots. And so, you know, I had a side turret shot on the meal. I had some uh, three, hull sh uh, three hull shots that hit the WZ-120. And then I had several shots going against their cupolas that penetrated since I had no better shot available, right? But, you know, even even if those shots are not necessarily high, qual um, high quality, high percentage shots, I'm not giving them much to shoot of me as well either, right? And you want to be sure to track things like, you know, which opponents are loading premium ammo and firing on you. Uh, I've had opponents even switch over to high explosives to damage me, just put away my hit points, like, you know, 150, 160 um, hit points at a time. I've had that happen from opposing um, tier 8 heavy tanks. In general, though, I, I think you want to use you know, AP, APCR, uh, heat, you know, those types of ammos as much as possible, and only save high explosive targets for targets that you know that you can penetrate, you know, squishy paper targets or tanks that are so low health that even if they're well armored that, you know, with like a tank destroyer like this, like, you know, I have 400 AP alpha, but the high explosive is 515, so there's a pretty good likelihood against, you know, tier 8, tier 9, even heavy tanks that the splash damage or the, you know, the amount of damage that you get after you have the high explosive damage, like if you get a shot that doesn't penetrate with high explosive, you have the alpha on it, and then you subtract the armor, the effective, uh, sorry, the armor that you're hitting, not the effective armor, like worrying about slope or angle, or any of that kind of stuff. And so I think the way the math works is if this this tank does, you know, 515 alpha with the high explosive round on a penetration, then you're looking like in the neighborhood of close to 260 if you have that, and then subtract the armor. And a lot of heavy tanks, for example, frontally will have armor in the range of like, um, of actual armor thickness, something like, you know, like 180 to maybe 200. So, you know, if you subtract that from the halved value of the high explosive, you're still going to get enough to deal, you know, 50, 60, 70 damage. Now, part of the, you know, challenge with the T28, especially in a match like this where I'm the bottom tier, I was originally going to go hill, right? As a matter of fact, we had an M48 go hill solo, so I'll talk about him in a moment, right? But I was starting to go hill, and then instead what I decided to do is pivot and go north along the 8 lane to help support, uh, support our moisture gen since he was the only tank that was in the 8 lane. We had multiple things happen that were really problematic from a deployment perspective. And part of the problem that I have right now is I can't push the top of the hill solo. So I'm asking for help. Moisture gen's going to sit and squat on tank alley, which is fine. That's a good thing for him to do. But what I don't want to do is push so far forward 
in a slow tank like this where I'm self-flanking. I'm going to make it really easy for the opposing tanks. They may eat a shot from me frontally, but then they'll just drive by behind me, track me, or just park behind me and shoot me in the rear, and there's nothing that I can do about it. And I'm actually asking for help, you know, from some of these tank stores if they can flex easy, or from this LT-432 driver. So he's actually making the run over here towards Hill, which is why I'm just waiting to see if he makes the... Okay, he comes around the corner, so now I know he's coming this way. I can now push Hill, and I won't be isolated. I'll have someone who can help protect my flanks. And, you know, we can see what's going on with Hill. But there were two major mistakes that were made in terms of the deployment by our team. One is that we had a plethora of tanks push along the one-two lanes, especially heavies. And that's fine as long as you push aggressively and get their back line spotted. Those are usually kind of weaker, squishier tanks you know, defeat those tanks and then push east across the map. So for example, like our T-10, you know, he started pushing up along the two lane and then now he stopped on the three lane and he's a very durable heavy tank. And instead he's letting the tanks that are in front of him, the T-100LT, the Scorpion-G and our ELC even, uh, he's letting those tanks get ahead of him, right? And so, you know, in a situation like this, a city map, a brawly map, a, a T-10 really is well built for this kind of map. And so, What's happened here is their tanks that had flooded the hill initially went back and easily reset cap. And again, you know, a small map like this, 99% of the time, cap is not going to determine the outcome. Now, our LT-432 did one really good thing. He put two shots into the Scorpion G and took him out. Um, part of the problem right there is he was trying to flank the gorilla, but the gorilla knew he was there, right? And I actually talked to this guy. He messaged me after this game because uh, he watches my videos, and what I told him was, him killing the scorpion, brilliant. He should have run away from the gorilla, waited until the gorilla shot me, and then turn around and go and flank the gorilla. What you don't want to do if you're one-shottable is push on an enemy tank that knows that you're there, and they have your their turret facing in your direction, right? Now, you might be wondering why I didn't fire high explosive against that gorilla. The most important thing, up until that last shot, was I wanted to make sure to keep that guy tracked. Keep tracked and deal damage because he doesn't have a fully rotating turret in this as <laughs> I park. I uh, pinch the Udez behind me in place until our TD can, can finish him off. Okay, so I talked about, you know, the failure of our tanks along the 1-2 line. They should have pushed much more aggressively. And that's why, you know, with, with pubs, 1-2 lane pushes often don't work because a lot of the times the people who go to the 1-2 lanes are the kind of people who are going to camp because they don't, they're not really skilled or knowledgeable or able to read the map, right? But they should have been pushing gangbusters once they saw that a T-10 was with them. They had a heavy, because that's pretty unusual. Even our KV-4 was down like along the three, three lane area. Those guys should have just pressed the W key and gone and pressured their weaker tanks. Now, the other problem that we had was our M48 Patton. I was originally gonna go towards Hill, but then I turned around to go support the Moist Chen in Tank Alley. And then I had to stop and wait to get a shot on that HWK, which had YOLO'd straight down the five lane and was putting pressure on our arty, right? But while all this was going on, our M48, and here's here's the case, like you remember with that, uh, that Udez, I just had to ignore the fact that he was there, kill the gorilla, right? Because the gorilla is the one with the big scary gun and their Udez, I got lucky, their Udez like bounced several shots off of me. I, I don't know, I, he, the guy might've been trying for a tracking shot or just flat out has bad aim or got bad RNG. One really important thing to note, by the way, when you're balling with tanks like this, like because if you point your gun down and granted this tank only has six degrees of gun depression, but if you're face hugging like this and you point down on the hull, you're, um, you're pointing your gun more perpendicular to their armor so you're negating the slope, right? And so those are relatively easy penetrations even though the upper hull of the T-32 is pretty solid. Now what I gotta do is get down to the moist chin and help him. What He's gonna make a really big mistake. He's actually gonna drive down that really wide uh, southwest corridor toward our base. I know he's worried about getting capped but actually the bigger issue is he's gonna die and he's put himself in a very long hallway with no hard cover. This code that I'm flashing on the screen, this is for you North American players so I gotta a community contributor code for the month of December so you can put this in on the Watt portal and get three packs of boosters. You can only enter in one community contributor code per month for North America at least for this month of December so if you've already entered one in you won't get anything if you enter mine in and if you guys are paying attention I also posted that code uh, earlier on my channel in the community section so at any rate this is a really tough position right now if I just push toward where the ELC is. They could easily two-cap this. If the 430 drives into the cap, the game's over. I can't get over there in time. 
But what I was hoping to do here is just get a kill on the Progetto so he's not behind me, because he can three-shot me, right? And then as it turns out, these guys are going to get off the cap because they're going to come try and find me and kill me. Now, what was a real bummer, and I understand what why the Moistian did what he did, why he was heading southwest toward, toward cap, because he was afraid of them capping us out. But by driving that long hallway, he was then, I, I, you know, I can't physically see him, but I could tell because he was eating damage and not dealing any, he's probably slowly rotating his turret back and forth. And if that's happening, what you got to do is just pick one target, go after them, and try to deal damage to them. If you're trying to kind of look back and forth between two targets that are on the opposite sides of your tank, you won't deal any damage, right? And that's essentially what I did when I was facing the gorilla, right? Putting shells into him and f intentionally ignoring the Udez. And then same things when I was uh, fighting with the shooting down on the Super Conqueror, or sorry, the Conqueror, which was a very dangerous tank, and their, uh, T, uh, their T-32 two was uh, firing at me. So you can't fix certain things. It is what it is. You just got to take out what you can take out. What I'm doing is I'm this quarter here, Tank Alley, is actually much better than that southwest road where the Moishan died because there's all these rocks and buildings and it's much more narrow, right? That Done that long, long hallway, it's much harder to find cover. And what I'm hoping for is to get a shot. What I don't want to do is get spotted from a long quarter because they'll know where I am. What I'm hoping is that someone's going to drive across my field of vision and I can pick one of them off. But what's really interesting, this is going to be a loss. If our moist gen had landed one more shot of damage, I could have carried and potentially finished off three, these three tanks with how it plays out. But, you know, that wasn't the case. And, you know, we had multiple mistakes, you know, especially including that M48 going up the hill all by his lonesome. And then, you know, just getting absolutely zerged by their tanks and really not dealing any. I think he landed one shot of damage in this um, in this battle. And uh, notice I am moving up back again because they know where I am. And this is like a game of cat and mouse. Like I don't want to be too predictable. And now what I decided is I was going to push and then turn to the left here in a second. I don't you know I I don't want to sit in a crossroad. So I have to pick a direction and be decisive. And then what's unfortunate for me was that shot missed. It did track him, but it didn't damage him. And then uh, I'm going to get tracked here in a second. And I immediately burned my repair kit, but then I get tracked again. So they're doing the right thing. You know, they're, they're tracking me, keeping me pinned, and that's GG. Now, I do want to clarify one thing because, you know, in other videos you've seen me talk about the importance of supporting a weak flank or punishing enemies when they're coming in. That's generally on open maps where they have to traverse a kill zone, like a lot of open ground. But that definitely is not the case in a map like this where like that where that M48 is, it's so corridory. If he gets zerked up on a hill and there's no one nearby, like he's a goner. There's there's nothing we can do to save him or, or fix that problem. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your feedback in the comments below. Take care.